In this video, you will learn how to run a Mac operating system in the cloud with Amazon Web Services, specifically an EC2 instance that's accessible via SSH, VNC, and Apple Remote Desktop. Now, since your Mac instance will run on actual genuine Apple Mac mini hardware in a data center, this is considered a dedicated host. And for that reason, pricing can be quite expensive. Mac hardware has a minimum allocation of 24 hours and at a rate of $1.08 per hour, you're looking at just under $26 to test this out for a day and around $800 for a monthly rate. But for that price, you're getting six 3.2 gigahertz physical cores with 32 gigabytes of memory in an unbelievable amount of bandwidth. Because of this, Amazon prevents just anyone from spinning up their own Mac Cloud instance without first manually requesting a quota increase first. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do right now. From your AWS dashboard, do a search for quota and click on service quotas. Click on the Amazon EC2 link and search for dedicated Mac. As you can see here, the default quota is zero and it's adjustable. So tick that off and click the request quota increase button. All you have to do here is type in one for the new quota value and then click on request. You'll receive an email regarding the limit increase, which will ask you a few questions and you can use the link in the email to write your response in the AWS support center like I did here. Usually within a day or two, your request will be approved. And that means we are ready to spin up your first Mac cloud instance. Back in your AWS dashboard, click on compute, then EC2, then select dedicated hosts. Click on allocated dedicated host and fill out your settings like this. Give your host a name, select the Mac one instance family, Mac one dot metal instance type, choose an availability zone and enable instance auto placement. Now in this case, it turns out that my availability zone wasn't available, go figure. So I simply choose another one and that worked for me. Now that we have a dedicated host, the next thing that we have to do is to create a Mac instance. Go to your EC2 dashboard, click on launch instance and search for Mac OS. I'm going to pick Monterey and on the next page we have the Mac one dot metal option. So click next on the instance details page. The only thing you need to configure is the host by selecting the dedicated host that we created earlier. Allocate as much storage space as you need, any tags, and then you'll want to optionally open up the SSH port for your computer's IP address. If everything looks okay, go ahead and launch your instance. The last step here is to create and download an SSH key pair. When you click on the view instance on host button, you'll now see that your CPU utilization has been allocated. But more importantly, when you navigate to the instances section, you'll see your Mac instance initializing. After a few minutes, you should see that all the status checks have passed. And this means that we are ready to log in. Tick the box next to your instance and then click on connect. While you have multiple options for connection, we're going to use SSH. Open a command prompt or putty if you're on Windows or terminal if you're on a Mac. Navigate to the directory where your SSH key was downloaded and execute the SSH command that has been provided for you. If you get the unprotected private key file error, simply use the chmod command to change the permissions of the file to 400. Now when you execute the SSH command, you will be logged into the remote Mac machine. Here you can see me running a few commands to confirm that I am indeed logged into a Mac machine, including the brew command, which is a popular package manager for Mac only. With brew, I installed HTOP, which allows us to see the 12 virtual CPU cores, the 32 gigabytes of memory, and all the processes that are currently running. Now, in order to access our Mac's graphical user interface, we need to set up an SSH tunnel and connect to it over VNC. If you don't know what that means, I have videos that explain what these concepts are, but otherwise you could just follow along. I used this AWS help document and executed these commands on my Mac in order to set up VNC and the password associated with it. Then from my local computer, I ran the SSH tunnel command. With that terminal window still open, you can open any VNC client and connect to localhost colon 5900. In order to authenticate, provide EC2 user as the username and the password that you just created. And within seconds, you'll be on the Mac login screen where you can use your password to log in. This is a fully functional Mac instance in the cloud, and we can confirm the specs by going to about this Mac, where we'll see the operating system version with the processor and memory details. I tried to log into FaceTime, which confirmed that the data center that I'm running in was indeed located in Columbus, Ohio, but the computer obviously did not have a camera, so that didn't work for me. What did work was iMessage, where I was able to send a few messages to my friend. There's a lot that you can do with a remote Mac machine, but like we talked about, it comes with a high cost. 
If nothing else, it's cool to play around with a Mac and simultaneously improve your command line skills, which if you're interested in doing that, I have this video right here.